Over the years, fears have been expressed about our runaway computers taking over the world as they start to develop an instinct for their own survival. This may be starting to happen right before our eyes, but it's not coming from the computers themselves. It is coming from an army of internet trolls fighting a very one-sided war of misinformation via the internet. This war has every chance of generating apocalyptic consequences. For many of us, trolls have been a growing nuisance for years now. In the US, we have seen how they can be used to unfairly promote one political party over another. It is done quite simply, through what has been called fake news, whether that news is coming from the right or from the left. But all of that pales into insignificance against literally millions of trolls now obediently extolling the virtues of the Chinese Communist Party and attacking anyone who believes otherwise. Outright ownership of some apps and communication facilities has become another form of control in the information war. Add to this a huge team of Chinese hackers who can break into virtually every application and sensor at will, and we can expect to soon see the entire globe silenced into oblivion in fulfillment of that ominous prediction by T.S. Eliot. This is how the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. If you're hearing this video at all, at this stage of the information takeover, it probably amounts to little more than a whisper against the shouts of support for the Chinese Communist Party. These shouts are quickly circling the globe in a stronghold on all information. I was recently flattered and surprised to see more than 100,000 people viewing a post I made on the internet which criticized the United States handling of the coronavirus by comparison to how China was reported to have handled it. I do believe that a Christian approach in all such matters requires us to deal with the facts even when they contradict other biases that we justifiably have. However, when I added comments to that post and others about how China has an abominable track record with regard to human rights abuses, suddenly that post and almost all similar posts by me were deleted from my account on Quora. Worse still, a link to those posts to a video documenting the abuse was blocked with a notice simply saying that the video contained misinformation. This was far from true. It contained a lot of very reliable, but also very damning evidence of torture and execution of dissidents in China. Ironically, some of the censorship by apps like YouTube and Facebook may be coming from a genuine campaign to stop some of the lies that are coming out of China at the moment. But a major problem is that such big apps are not able to manually examine each of the literally billions of posts that they have to deal with from day to day. So computer algorithms are set up which aim to silence the debate in general by applying restrictions equally to all sides. Unfortunately, such censorship reduces the number of posts from both sides without any way to determine which arguments are supported by evidence and which are not. Consequently, victory still goes to whichever side has the most troops still posting successfully after the bans have been imposed, and we know who that is. While those of us who are living in the West may not be able to imagine how the whole world could be won over to believing that the Chinese Communist Party is a good candidate for world domination, evidence suggests that people will soon stop hearing anything bad about what is happening inside China, and they will hear more and more conspiracy theories about how evil America is. People tend to believe whatever they hear being said the most, whether or not it is true has little to do with what they believe. The proliferation of obviously ridiculous conspiracy theories about such things as chemtrails and flat earth is evidence of how this type of brainwashing works. People surround themselves in so-called research where they listen to hundreds of hours of propaganda coming from only one side of the argument. Consequently, the more they listen, the more hopelessly they become hooked on the lies. 
But if we were to compare all of the propaganda out there for all of the past conspiracy theories combined, we might find them to be small change by comparison to what China is now doing and what it is going to continue doing in the days ahead. The West is fighting back by claiming conspiracies on the part of China, some of which are pretty unbelievable as well. Over time, however, I think we're going to see more and more people believing the opposite conspiracy theory. The one about Western governments being behind everything that is evil in the world, simply because there are more people spreading them. I believe this type of propaganda will merge with propaganda supporting the kind of theory that has already gained popularity among Western liberals, which is that faith in God is the single most powerful source of danger to the future of the world. Tragically, there is some truth in that. Not faith in God, but faith in so many religious substitutes for real faith. We on this channel have been quick to point out the counterfeits. Churches everywhere, but especially in the US, have been notoriously selfish, greedy and militaristic. In fact, I believe what is coming out of China right now is actually a form of divine judgment on the religious hypocrisy and lies that have been emanating from a corrupt and materialistic church. God has had enough of that. We can no longer hide in our church buildings or put our trust in politicians who say they will place the blame on gays and abortionists. We are going to have to either get it right with God or face the horrifying consequences that await us at the hands of China and Russia. A very important part of getting right with God involves being prepared to die as innocent victims in this battle for the souls of mankind. So if you're just looking for an escape from persecution and death, it is probably too late for that. But at least if you get it right with God now, you will have a much more genuine hope of an eternal resurrection when it is all over. Are you hearing what I am saying? I am saying that we may have passed the point where we had hope of turning this into a temporal victory against the forces of darkness. We may be heading into the devil's darkest hour as he is unleashed on a rebellious world. Our only victory may be to die in love for our enemies, unheralded as the enemies of the state, members of an evil cult, sources of all the problems in the world today, knowing that God alone can see our hearts and will reward us in the world to come. If I'm correct, over time most of us are going to die, not so much from the coronavirus as from an anti-Christian persecution. But even if we die from neither of them, the requirements are still the same and that is a willingness to lay down our lives in service to God and in love for others, including our enemies. Not working for our own survival, but working to build this everlasting kingdom of faith and love which Jesus came to promote. If you'd like to be put in touch with others who are doing this, please write to the address on screen, telling a little about your own spiritual journey. And please let me know what country you live in and which of our videos you have already seen. Whether other people hear us or not, let us be prepared to daily take up our cross in obedience to all that Jesus taught. I look forward to hearing from you today. Oh, and please do subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so that you'll be notified if more videos are released. Thank you for listening.